Welcome back to the Gear for Music Sydney Tech channel, guys. My name is Theo, and today we are at the stunning FOMO Studios in Camden, London, where we are going to have an exclusive listening session to the brand new HS3 and HS4 studio reference monitors from Yamaha just before their launch. And today we are in for a treat because we have with us Matteo, the owner of this studio, a seasoned record producer and mixing engineer, as well as being the front of house engineer for Sir Tom Jones. But that's not all, Chris is here too, a product expert from Yamaha with 20 years of experience who has worked with the HS series of monitors from their conception. All the monitors are set up, let's dive straight in. Matteo, lovely to meet you. Thank you for inviting us down to FOMO London Studios. We've got the brand new HS3 and HS4 studio monitors, which we're gonna take a listen to. And we've also brought down the HS5 studio monitors, which are a bit of a staple in the studio world. We're all familiar with these. So we're using them as a bit of a benchmark reference. Um, we've also got the MacBook computer, which is running some reference tracks and the DM3, which we're using as our switcher for the essentials of this uh, project today. So yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. It's, uh, it's always interesting for me to try new products and uh, I love speakers yep. and uh, especially small speakers because they always tell the truth. You know, they are maybe not so exciting as the, the large speakers, but you know, they are always the final choice when you want to finalize a mix or check if everything is in order. And it's also a pleasure to be able to see this little desk for the first time. Fantastic. Well, let's get into it then. Yeah. So Chris, uh, before we start, have you got anything to tell me about this speaker? So is there anything I need to know? And Yeah, absolutely. So the, the HS3 and HS4 are the brand new speakers, as I've mentioned already. The HS3 features a 3.5 inch woofer and a 0.75 inch dome tweeter. And the HS4, his bigger brother, has the 4.5 inch woofer and the one inch tweeter. So the concept of these speakers is to produce something that still gives you an accurate sound reproduction, but gives you a much smaller footprint, as we can obviously see here. They fit nicely onto any kind of desktop audio solution. In terms of how they're configured, um, we actually have one of them which features an amplifier and one of them is actually the slave monitor, which is where they differentiate from the previous or the current HS series, the HS5, 7 and 8, which are all um, Active. housed with their own amplifier. This makes them a lot more lightweight and portable, so they can be really useful in compact studios, but also very good for portable solutions where you need to be moving from one situation to another. Audio-wise, they still maintain the HS philosophy of consistent, clear sound right across the frequency spectrum. And because of the smaller woofers, they don't go quite as low as the HS5, 7 and 8, but they still give you a, a nice, solid, um, full frequency response. One thing I have noticed immediately while unboxing is the build quality. They feel very solid in your hand and yeah. not too light, which is always a yeah. good thing. And uh, another very important thing for me is uh, that the fact that all the drivers have uh, screws and they are removable. So in case something goes wrong, you know, it, they are easily repairable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We pride ourselves on our reliability and build quality, but obviously things do go wrong from time to time. So being able to switch things over quite quickly is, is important. Um, especially when they're used in places like education where accidents do happen when things are left kind of unsupervised. Um, so yeah, having that option is, is fantastic. Other things to mention as well, around the back, we've got great connectivity. Yeah. Um, so everybody's using different connections in this day and age. On the back of the HS3 and 4, you actually have a mini jack input. You've got RCA inputs and you've got combo inputs. So it will take an XLR or a jack input. So we've basically covered all four of the uh, popular input connection options and one of the key features of the HS series itself is the flared port design on the back yes. so where the, the low frequency uh, resonates out of the speaker we actually use the twisted flare point design and this essentially um, expels the, the, the noise distortion you get from the sound the, the air actually leaving the speaker and it kind of breaks that down and makes it unaudible there is a common problem in uh, in uh, speakers to have a noisy 
yeah. a bass port in the back yeah. and uh, that makes uh, difficult the positioning of the speakers. So I, I appreciate this, uh, this yeah. kind of structural feature. And, th and that's a very valid point yeah. as well, the positioning of the speaker. Of course, a lot of the time these are going to be used in, in much smaller rooms than what we're, yes. we've got the luxury of being in today. Um, and because of that, we actually have some room control and high frequency trim on the back. So if you do end up having to position them close to the wall, this can sometimes accentuate the bass response, but it's kind of a fake bass because yeah. it's not coming from the speaker. So we've got a couple of controls on the back that just allow you to attenuate that quite easily. Which I've noticed and appreciated. Yes. It's very important. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very popular feature. Okay, so we can uh, start listening to some music. Yeah, let's get yeah. into this. Okay. Okay, Chris, we listen to some of my favorite tunes, my playlist, uh, which I choose, you know, to tune speakers and check. Okay. You cool. know, it's uh, going to be a few mixer of electronics, electronic songs and non-electronic and acoustic. And uh, let's listen. Th this one in particular we are starting uh, with is uh, great to understand the bass consistency as it has a super deep bass with different notes that will make you understand if the boxes have strange resonances. resonances. Okay. There is a good consistency between the speakers. Uh, I'm sure you have heard um, the bass is present is present in the same way in both speakers. Yeah. Despite the fact that the HS4 have a smaller woofer, you can still hear the note, um, and dynamically they seem to respond very well. They, funny enough, they seem to have more transients than the HS4, which okay. is uh, unexpected. The three, this is the three. Yeah. You know. They seem to be louder, but that's probably because they lack a little bit of low end compared to the to the four. Yeah, um, very good, I must say. You know, the, the levels translate very well. The five are uh, probably another class. You know, let's check with something else. We play some Daft Punk.
they have a very good response. You know, they, I think they are very good in translating the levels, especially the two little ones. Yeah. Like them, you know, like them. And uh, the, the, the mid range is quite similar. They have different drivers, but it's quite similar. Is uh, uh, on this particular song, they sound very similar. You don't you don't hear them the difference in the low end that we had on the previous song. I like the high end; it's very natural, smooth. You understand the level of the vocals, the vocal there in this case. One thing I like is, you know, it's something you were doing with the old NS10. Yes. You were, in case you were not sure about the level of kick and bass, you were looking at the woofer. Yeah, the visual. The amount yeah. of movement in the, on the, on the cone. Yep. And it, it's the same thing here, you know. This song has a lot of hidden hidden frequencies in, in the low end in the 30 40 hertz range which you see you don't really hear but you see let's play something different i mean that's a very valid point as well because for a lot of people they will be using these in an environment where they don't have the luxury of being able to have the low frequency response so actually being able to understand that it is there is is a really nice tool to have in your armory and even if you it seems like even if you don't hear the low end i mean the bass notes are there uh. are there maybe they don't have the extension because of the dimension of the speaker but you can hear all the notes well balanced uh, there are no massive jumps or you know uh, strange resonances is they are very flat in the low end they have a very flat core, it's good. Let's play something more difficult for the high mid. This song, this song is uh, is my favorite because it, it, the mix is quite strange. It's very harsh in the high mid and uh, there are a lot of details to be catched in the in the song with effects reverb. Okay. Um, so it's very interesting to hear how they will translate with this song. Funny enough, Nile Rogers is playing here as well. Nile Rogers is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the confirmation of what we said before about the the low end. Yeah. This song, you know, is not very precise. The mix is not very precise in this, this song. So it will it will uh, create problems with any any speaker, you know, will struggle to uh, to play this song. But you know, they the I mid which are very, very cutting in this song are translating well, you know, they I hear what I would like to hear. Yeah. And did you notice any obvious differences between the two speakers on that particular mix? Well, the three and the four are very similar, I must say. I, I think that if you mix on both, you will tend to do the same thing yeah. in terms of EQ. Obviously, the four 
have a better uh, law and response. But the three have, they seem to have a more interesting mid range. You yeah. know, they seem to be more consistent on vocals. Um, uh, yeah, uh, they are equivalent. The five, they, they do, the five sound different, definitely different. Yeah. Um, but you know, my focus is on the little two now mm. at the moment because the, I know the five, yeah, they are, you know, an higher price, but these two are the, my main focus at the moment. Let's see if you can mix dance on those speakers. Yeah, in this song, obviously, the, the three are struggling a little bit, but not in terms of frequencies, it's purely the, the volume, you know. Yeah. You know, but, you know, it's still the balance is there. What I found on that one was the, the obvious steps between the three models. So when you went from the three to the five, it was a huge difference. Yeah. But then when you step back down to the four from the five, it was like, okay, that's kind of what I'd expect to, to hear. And then when you went from the fours to the threes, again, it was like that. So when you take that huge step, it's blindingly obvious. Yes. But when you go from the smaller to the, from the big to the medium one, it's, it's kind of as I would expect. But again, the purpose of these speakers is not uh, making a lot of noise and getting excited by the volume, you know, it's like right. probably listening at low level and uh, getting the balance right, you know? Yeah. And they do the I mean, it's still good. Obviously, the HS5 benefit of a bigger woofer. Yeah. So, Matteo, we've had a good listen to the HS3, HS4, and the HS5. Um, really interested to hear what you what you think about them. What's your? Uh, you know, these are two group of speakers. The HS5 are more uh, proper studio monitors. Yep. That, and I see the three or four being very useful at home in smaller studios or, you know, the fact that they, they are very easy to set up, they have very good connectivity possibilities. Uh, they are probably great as uh, portable speakers, you know, when you want to just put something in your bag and do some editing or uh, location. Uh, they sound very well, I must say, that as for speakers of this size, yeah, they sound good, they are accurate, they have they don't feel cheap. They don't feel cheap. The tweeter in both speakers is uh, performing well. Is uh, I like it. I like it. Definitely like it. But that's that's great to hear. You covered a couple of very valid points there. Obviously, the portability. So compared to the HS5, um, these are much lighter. Yes. So I think one HS5 is about five and a half kilos, whereas the combined um, system of the HS4s, for example, is six point eight kilograms. So slightly heavier than one HS5, but you get the pair. And then the HS3s are considerably lighter again. So for anybody that is working in multiple locations, but wants to take their trusted sound source with them, it's a really good idea for that. In terms of the, 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 the sound, um, yes, they're not as full on professional as the HS5s, but um, 
it's nice that you picked up the point that they do give that consistent um, equal frequency where you can actually see see what's happening with the sound, if that makes sense. Um, hearing what's happening with the sound is probably a better way to put it. In terms of people that might be using them, where where could you see? So obviously we were listening today on a listening back to master tracks perspective. Um, how do you think they would settle in into a, a studio where somebody's mixing? You know, you c I would use those yeah for everything yeah you know it, you can use them in a big studio big professional studio to check things check levels you know or you know they fit perfectly in a in a bedroom in a <laughs> bedroom where yeah. where you know you have a little laptop you know and a small workstation programming you know they they are just perfect for that i don't see a specific uh, area where you can use them Personally, I will use them anywhere, you know. Yeah. And again, portable, you know, move them around in rooms, you know, traveling, you know, when you're on tour and need a couple of speakers to work, this will do the job perfectly. Yeah. Super easy to set up. And, uh, you know, the dimensions, you know, they especially the HS3, they might look, you know, like small computer, but they they don't sound small. They sound expensive. Yeah. They do have a good quality. You can hear the quality um, despite the dimension. That's that's the main thing. Yeah, absolutely. So a nice little carry case. Yes. You could see an engineer, a producer, taking these on tour with him, yeah. He's setting them up in the hotel or on the tour bus. Or simply to listen to your uh, music, you know. Yeah. With the phone. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, they're, they're geared up for that with the uh, mini auxiliary jack on the in exactly. on the back. Cool. Well, All thank right. you very much. Um, Thanks to you. Appreciate you it giving me a, a listen. pleasure. And um, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for checking out today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please do leave us a comment down below if you have any opinions on the brand new HS3 and HS4 monitors from Yamaha. I thought it was super enlightening to hear a seasoned professional like Matteo voice his opinions on the two new units and what he liked and what he didn't like and where he thought the monitors would work. As always, please do not forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon. Bye.